We have arrived once again at the Cooperative Center for the Development of Children and Adolescents. But our work didn't start here in this building. It started in 1988 in the center of Niteroi with street children. We worked for many years with street children, and I realized that many of the children went from their communities and onto the streets because they were avoiding school. So there was this problem of children who, due to problems in the community and at school, were instead going out onto the streets. Because of this, we started to look for solutions with the street children. This house here was given to us by Jorginho, who at the time had just won the 1994 Football World Cup. And I'd known him since 1992 from my time doing a postdoctorate in Austria, when he was playing for Bayern München in Germany. He always had a great love for poor children, especially as he was originally from a poor community like me. So with the winnings from his football career, he donated this house to us, which is now the headquarters of CCDA. Inside of this house, which I would say is far more than just walls, tiles, and cement, there are real lives and ones that are going to be transformed by education. I was born in Duque de Caxias, in a poor community. Nowadays it would be called a favela or slum. I understand very well the reality in these communities. I'm a physicist and lecturer in the Applied Mathematics Department of the Fluminense Federal University. What motivated me to work with children was not the fact that I was born poor, but more to do with the change in my life in 1974. When I converted to Christianity and I started to read the Bible and I realized that God liked poor people, I remember that my wife once took a child that she met in Antonio Pedro Street back home. She started to give food to that child. I thought, well, is this helping? Because many times you want to help, but you don't know the right way or you don't have a method. And I believed that taking a child to our house is not the best strategy. So I decided to learn about street kids and hang out at their places. I got involved in lots of things. I didn't know how to gather a better understanding of their world. In 1991, I went for my postdoctoral studies to Austria in the United States. And in 93, I was in the U.S. and I started to visit social programs because I had a friend who invited me to take a look. And something struck me and influenced me something that we now do here. There, in the U.S., it's called After School Learning Center, which is basically work carried out by the churches and communities after school. Basically, it was almost all black children there. In the morning, they would have school, and then afterwards, they would have more activities. I thought this program in the U.S. was really good. Since the source of street children is the poor community. So why don't we try to do some sort of prevention work? So this is where the idea came from, to create CCDIA, the Cooperative Center for the Development of Children and Adolescents. Theater is one of the methods we use to make the children reflect. Making them reflect and understand the people and the roles that they interpret allows them to gain a greater reading of the message the theater expresses.
The student can see by starting to look at the consequences and possibilities of the play, the different ways of solving problems in their own lives. I was nine years old when I first heard of Cicidia. I came to study here, I learned and I played here. When I finished school, I managed to get a place at university with a full grant to study oil engineering. It was my dream. I hope that this idea can continue because there are so many lost children who have nothing to do with their free time. I just hope they have the opportunity to have the same support that I had because nowadays it is not easy in our society. We provide educational support together with the local schools. My wish here in Itaboraí is to make a project to support the families that are already being looked after by us and to be able to give a good level of education support to the children. The site we have here is like a farm, so I hope we can generate some funds. We need to explore this area and develop the site. My job together with the children, teenagers and parents is to develop a project that strengthens us not only educationally, since I am a teacher, but also emotionally, physically and spiritually. Everything here is tough, but we're making it work. My wife and I are trying to make this farmland profitable for ourselves, for Cicidia, and for the community. Because there's a very loving and deserving community here. We have children here with many issues. For example, their parents are drug addicts, or their mothers leave them at home or on the street. This hurt me a lot and brings great pain to my heart even today. The only way I can see to help these children is through this project. The truth is that this is a space for children, or for the children's parents, so that they can grow up and realize their potential. But at the same time, they shouldn't feel that they are in an institution. We try to make this a very relaxed place without pressure, so that they feel that this is their place. What matters is that a child enters here without even knowing how to read or write, but leaves empowered in the sense that now they do know how to read and write and feel that they do have a future and hope. Because, in my opinion, not having hope is the greatest cause of urban violence in this country. I believe that we are fulfilling the role of providing a place where this team and the volunteers have the right heart for children and adolescents to pass on this seed of hope, which is fundamental. Trying to get this child from the poor community, who lives a life so far removed from those in the middle class, with their telephones, mobile phones, computers, internet, to compete against the wealthier ones in the job market is impossible. They have no chance. Here we have a number of works by children who have problems with their writing. Initially, they did not know where the words started and ended. So we started to work with this typewriter, which was one of many things donated to us. After they had written their own notes, we would go over to the typewriter and I would correct their notes. 
This helped them realize where one word started and another one began. And they understood the mechanisms of language, that you need to have spaces and pauses within the writing. And here are the finished results, with their writing above and below the designs and pictures they drew. Many children arrive here illiterate even though they are attending public schools. You have children in the third or fourth year of school that don't even know how to read or write. Or they might know how to read or write, but don't know how to understand the content, so they are functionally illiterate. This is a serious problem in Brazil. Because of this, we have pre-tutoring for children who are so far behind that they won't be able to keep up in our program. We have Portuguese workshops, mathematic workshops to focus on the required areas. We also work with computers, but not only to teach computing, but to help with the overall education of children with mild cerebral palsy, because computers are a fantastic tool for this. Education is a very wide and varied area. It involves aspects of life that sometimes people don't even realize. Let's take food for an example. You learn how to eat well with little food. Some children arrive here without having had breakfast, and having breakfast is a must. I remember when I was young, I did not have coffee, milk, nothing. I had warm water and sugar. There was no coffee. I know what it's like to not have a proper breakfast. And many children don't have this, and it's a reality here for many. So if you do give a child breakfast, this not only makes the child feel better, but it gives them more motivation to study. Another thing that we do here is provide medical checkups. When a child comes to CCDIA, we make sure that they are seen by an optician who is also a volunteer here. So the child that cannot see well receives glasses. The optician does this all for free. We also have a dentist and a psychologist that both come here as volunteers. CCDIA has a vision to reach those who have no one looking out for them and is doing a marvelous job. We have the church and Fernando and his wife doing the very important job of helping educate the children. Children are growing and being prepared for their future. CCDIA offers far more than preschool or school support. CCDIA improves the lives of boys and girls and also their capacities and characters. It ensures that they will become better adults, better sons and daughters, and better husbands and wives. We go to museums, the theater, on cultural trips. This puts the children in a social setting, because this is what is causing violence. When a person does not have experiences because they're excluded from things and remain in the ghetto. When they go to the shopping center, everyone thinks they're a thief. In the street, people look at them strangely. I know what this feels like. So what do people think is going to happen when the child grows up? And then it's only when they have a gun in their hand that the public starts to respect them. But it's much better to respect a child now, 
and allow them to have the same rights as your child and my child. This is fundamental and vital for any society to advance. People say that Brazil has improved a lot recently, but our human development index is really bad. There are children and people dying here because of dirty water, water that is not treated, and open sewers. The children are exposed to this. This house here is symbolized by its cleanliness and organization. Beautiful surroundings are very important to help your self-esteem. I remember when I was living in the favela in northern Rio, known nowadays as the Complexo do Alamão, that when it rained the sewage would openly pass through the houses. It was terrifying. I remember sleeping in this place and there were huge rats crawling everywhere. This is what children are exposed to. This safe space here in the school is what generates hope. These elements integrate the child into society. It helps to fill the mosaic with things that the children don't have, like healthy food, social lives, and good education. This mosaic is what makes this project a success. Many people think that a social project is only started because of love or sentimentality. But social projects need much more than this. We need people. But we don't just need people to occupy space. We need people who are passionate about people. There are many projects that need this. We need to improve the buildings to ensure the surroundings are suitable for disabled people. We need educational material. All of this is only achieved through financial resources. We rely on the generosity of people to support the project because we have new projects. But on many occasions, we lack the resources.